Greetings and praise the Lord. Welcome to our daily devotion. We are on a great anointing. That is a powerful topic that the Lord has given us for this week. And I ask you, if you will get time, you can also check on what we did last week because it was also very powerful. But now I would like you to be with us every day so that you hear what God is speaking about this great anointing. That does not mean that... Um, some people are more anointed than the others. But you know what? There is a great anointing that God has for each one of us. And we need to see what we need to do so that we are anointed in a great manner. You don't just want a piece. You want everything. You want all that God has. And uh, let's look at the first episode, which is on total commitment. Uh, when you talk about commitment, you're talking about dedication, loyalty, responsibility, pledge, obligation. We'd like to see the, about uh, Elijah and Elisha and see how this, their anointing and, their, and, and, how they were, and how they were anointed and how committed they were. In 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 16 to 21, I'm reading from the New King James Version. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi as king over Israel, and Elijah, the son of Shepherd of Abel, Meholah, you shall anoint as prophet in your place. It shall be that whosoever escapes the sword of Israel, Jehu will kill, and whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. Yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal and every mouth that has not kissed him. So he departed from there and found Elijah, the son of Shepherd, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he was with the twelfth. The, then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him, and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Please let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? So Elijah turned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slaughtered them and boiled their flesh using the oxen's equipment and gave it to the people and they ate. Then he arose and followed Elijah and became his servant. Now, this is total commitment. We see someone who was, who was really greatly anointed. I'm sure Elijah knew about Elijah because Elijah was a great prophet who had a great anointed, who had done great miracles. And now this, this one, I mean, God already has chosen Elijah. It's not Elijah that chose Elijah. It is God who had chosen Elijah. Elijah and uh, wanted Elijah to become committed and even to become a follower, and even to become a servant that will be able to walk with Elijah so that he can see what God can do in the life of a man of God who is committed to the Lord. And the question is today, um, who, have, you, have you been um, respectful to the ones that the Lord has anointed? And are you ready and willing even to walk and serve those whom God has called you to serve. Because there are people that God has raised and has called you to serve until your time of when you will be called to be in their position to serve. There is no way you'll be raised into that position that you've always longed, to, longed for until you're willing to submit, until you are willing to have total commitment to serve. This is Elijah. And when God had, had spoke, God spoke specific on what he needs to do about his mantle, what he needs, whom he needs to give the mantle to. Many people are asking for mantles and wanting mantles. Some of them are wanting those mantles by force. You see people are running and pursuing where they know there is a, a heavy anointing and a special anointing. 
but they just want the mantle. There is no way you can get the mantle without service. Elijah was speak because one, he was not found idle. You will not be found I No one is going to pick on you. No one is going to raise you or even desire to release that mantle to you if you are sitting there lazy. And let me tell you, we have ministers who are lazy. We have people who are really lazy. They don't want to do anything. They want to sit there and they just want to, yes, they, are, they say they are waiting upon the Lord. When the word wait, with the word waiting upon the Lord has really been misused. Waiting upon the Lord is not just it, sitting idle, not knowing what you're supposed to do, or not even having a plan on what you're going to do even tomorrow. You need to plan for today and the future on what you're going to do with your life and how you're going to do in, when it comes, when it, when it's uh, concerning the other people, because if there is no way you're gonna plan on what you need to do to become better than the way you are, and even to improve in your life, especially your spiritual life, then you know what? There is no one is gonna release that mantle that you are longing for and running after. The time has come when the body of Christ needs to know that you don't just sit and wait and expect for the mantle or just go running after it. Elijah was not running after the mantle. He was busy doing the work of plowing. We see he had not just one, he didn't have just one, um, he did not just have one yoke of oxen, but we are told he had the 12, he had 12 and uh, 12 yoke of oxen before him and he was with the 12. So that means that he was behind and you can imagine the kind of work he was doing was not an easy one. It was not uh, just an ordinary kind of work. But this is work that was doing not just for himself. Someone who is having an oxen and having not only one having 12 and taking care of all of them by himself. This is a man that God has seen that is capable of even when the mantle is released, is going to be, to bear, uh, he's going to release a double anointing upon him so that he can continue serving because he was already committed in the work that he had been given to do. And uh, many of us, you just want to, yes, you want to just run after that mantle, get that anointing and run. But here there is something you need to be doing. What are you doing, especially when it comes to your life? What are you doing, especially when it comes into raising others? Because if you're going to run after a mantle and take it or even take it by force, then you know what? How are you going to give it away? Do you not have mantles are not for snatching? Mantles are for somewhere you go, you, you have to be committed, found committed and found worthy to be able to receive a mantle. You don't just receive a mantle by dreaming about it or just by talking about it. It, it, it requires a total commitment in resolve the king of kings. And you know, when, uh, when even Elijah came and laid the mantle upon him, because God had already declared what Elijah was going to do, and he was not going to do little things. He was going to do big things. Because you know what he was told, I mean, he is going to be, um, to deal even with the kings. He's not dealing with small people. Imagine someone plowing and then God raising him all at once and uh, God raising him into a level where he will be dealing with kings. He's not going to be dealing with just anybody. This is a person that will be dealing with great people. So that is why you have to be found worthy in what God has given you, what kind of business has God given you to do? What kind of work has God given you to do? Because we have people who are really lazy even in their places of work. They don't want to do the work that they are given. They are lazy. But I'm here to let you know, their mantles are for people who are ready and willing that even when they're presented before the kings, they know how they're going to handle each and every one 
It doesn't matter their level, their rank, but they can manage and handle. Then um, we look at El Elijah. We know what when he when when Elijah placed the the mantle on him, we are told that you know what he left. He left immediately. He made sure that he goes back to burn everything that would hold him back, even the equipment that was there. He used it to, to, to uh, as fire, to, to, to boil and even cook and even serve the people so that he can live and save, bid them bye bye to let them know that you know what I am now. I'm now following uh, the servant of God. I am now going to be his servant so that I can see him. I can see the Lord raising him to a level where he want to raise him and so that I can continue even being used of him. In Psalms 51 verses 1 to 2, New, New Living Translation, Who may worship in your sanctuary, Lord? Who may enter your presence on your holy hill? Those who lead blameless lives and do what is right, speaking the truth from sincere hearts. Here there is something you need to do. You do what is right you lead blameless lives living blameless life is not living idle Le uh, doing the right thing is not you have to do something what is this that you are doing what is this we talked about commitment and talked about dedication loyalty responsible pledge obligation what are you doing are you dedicated are you loyal are you responsible so because those are the ones who are going to Worship the Lord in his sanctuary. If you are not responsible, there is no way you're going to tell us you're worshiping God. If you are not loyal, even if you are a worship leader and you're not loyal, let me tell you, it does not matter how you seem to be anointed. If you are not loyal, you're not dedicated, then you are not committed. May the Lord bless you as you serve him and walk in his ways and desire even to be committed unto him as you continue to walk in his ways. God bless you for now. This is Bishop Dr. Grace Kariuki of Amazing Grace International Ministries and Abundant Glory International Ministries, mother to the amazing champions and mother to the CMCs around the globe. And here, I ask you to log into our website www.agracem.org at the same time partner choose to partner with this ministry also invite you also to follow us on youtube and facebook that is at bishop dr grace karaoke and uh, you can also follow us on instagram and twitter at bishop dr grace karaoke and also at karaoke bishop dr grace and i'm letting you know that you let's let's pursue the lord and see how he wants us to go about this business of receiving this great anointing and even receiving the mantle that is heavily anointed. God bless you for now. I look forward to work with you this journey this week. It's going to be glorious. I'm telling you, you invite your friends, share with you as many people as you can share with. And please, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so. And uh, even ask your friends to do the same. God bless you for now. I look forward even to hear and read those comments. And uh, if you'd want to participate more in even sharing that which God has placed in your heart, especially concerning the great anointing, I would ask you to let me know. Let me hear what God has placed in your heart. And you will be blessed as you purpose to be a servant of the Lord, even as we serve the Lord together. For now, God bless you. Shalom, shalom.